Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's been a little while since I made our last video, so I'm sorry about that. There's just been quite a lot going on that I'm quite excited to update you all on um, in due course. Um, but I am super keen to return um, and uh, today um, I'm going to be doing a video about hydroquinone. I think it's quite an important skincare ingredient but it has a really bad rep and some of that is for good reason. Um, I thought it'd be quite interesting if we kind of had a little chat about it and of course please um, as you always do don't forget you know send me send me your comments if you have experience of using it if you have questions about it um, but uh, let's get uh, before we get started if you're new to this channel welcome don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel hit the notification bell and um, if you are an existing viewer welcome back and thank you so much for your support so let's get started let's jump into it hydroquinone what is it well hydroquinone is a skincare ingredient that's been around for a long time um, and what it essentially does is it uh, suppresses melanin um, production so uh, what that does is it reduces um, uh, pigment in the skin um, and so it has been used in a variety of ways uh, some good some bad um, so it's all the range from treating things like hyperpigmentation and then to things like skin bleaching at the other end of that um, and uh, with hyper with hydroquinone um, in the UK um, hydroquinone is a prescription only medication I believe the US is the same and most of the EU um, there are some parts in the world where you can get it over the counter but the reason it's a prescription only medication is actually because uh, a lot of care has to be taken with it and it should only be used in certain ways for a certain amount of time. So typically hydroquinone, um, the percentage that um, most uh, products um, often have is 4%. Most of the time it comes just by itself, maybe you know in a formulation that just uh, helps stabilize it and carry it um, but sometimes you can get hydroquinone in specialist formulations where they're des it's designed to be used alongside another product to improve the efficacy of that product or it's even mixed in with something anyway regardless of that the way that it does work is it gets absorbed into the skin and then it suppresses the melanocytes which are the cells that produce melanin which is pigment um, if used responsibly and used for a limited time of period, then uh, hydroquinone is excellent at doing a few things. So it can treat things like hyperpigmentation, especially post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, um, which is the, uh, what you get when there's injury to the skin or after an acne breakout, um, uh, burns, that sort of thing. Um, there is also, um, it can be used to treat uh, melasma, so some damage, um, and again it will suppress the pigment and even out the skin tone, um, and uh, the last thing that it can be quite useful for is sometimes hereditary dark circles under the eyes or around the mouth, um, and again if used um, in a certain way for a limited period of time, what it will do is it will lighten those hyperpigmented areas, but really the uh, aim of an effective treatment is that the rest of your skin, your normal skin, stays the same color and what you're doing is just um, removing the hyperpigmentation from those areas, whether that hyperpigmentation is um, due to freckles, whether it's due to sun damage um, like melasma, whether it's due to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, so that's, uh, and often when it's used in that context, usually it's used once or twice a day. Um, depending on the hyperpigmentation and um, depending on the extent of the hyperpigmentation so if it's hyperpigmentation in a very localized small area often you apply the hydroquinone um, just to that area if it's widespread like melasma all over the face then um, or uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that's maybe in a breakout that affected the entire face or a large bit of it then you would apply it to the whole face but again um, used uh, once or twice a day, again, depending on what your doctor thinks is best, um, and also used um, for a limited period. So this is the important thing. Generally, we don't recommend anyone stay on uh, hydroquinone for more than 24 weeks at a time. And that is because, firstly, 
uh, hydroquinone should work during that period. Um, and secondly, long-term use of hydroquinone does a few things. Um, it's maybe associated with a few risks. One of them is that it can affect, um, uh, you know, so like I said, it can lead to skin bleaching, changing the quality of the skin. Uh, the other thing is sometimes long-term use can be associated with uh, kind of uh, issues with kidney or liver uh, damage, um, uh, especially if it's used at a high strength for a very long time. Um, and then the third reason is that really it will do most of its effectiveness within that period. If you continue to use it, the gains are quite low given the risks of side effects. Um, and thirdly, that there's always something you can do to maintain the result or to build on it. So, for example, uh, if someone started with us um, hydroquinone um, for post for hyperpigmentation, we would also then most likely use uh, tretinoin alongside that or retinol. Um, and then, when they finish the course of hydroquinone, they would stay on the retinol or tretinoin for ongoing maintenance and improvement of the results because those two products can be used. Um, you know, in the long term without any problems um, and they do not damage the skin um, and they, you know, other than if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or allergic to them, then they're safe to use um, consistently and for however long the period. Um, so that, that's the kind of thing to remember with hydroquinone. Um, the other um, thing with hydroquinone that a lot of people don't realise is if, it, you know, you absolutely have to be super strict with using sunscreen and sun protection, which you should be anyway, but with hydroquinone it's even more important because with hydroquinone uh, you can end up with rebound hyperpigmentation. So you could have cleared up your hyperpigmentation, let's say you had lots of sun damage and you spent a good 24 weeks, you know, clearing it up, you use the hydroquinone, the tretinoin, all of that stuff. If you then, and you're happy, you've got the skin that you had before, it's the years of sun damage. If you then don't have really strict sun care and you go out in the sun, it will all come back and all quickly come back as if you did nothing. And that is truly terrible because it's a lot, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money um, because you're literally in the spot where you were. Um, the other thing that is important to be uh, careful with hydroquinone is not everybody responds to it in the right way and so you can end up with people just getting um, hyper or hypopigmentation as a result of the hyperpigmentation as a result of being on hydroquinone if they don't respond to it correctly and that's why it's important to use it under the care of a doctor who is experienced with this product who can follow up um, and make sure that you're not getting experiencing any side effects and if you are to stop them quickly. Um, and then the other thing with hydroquinone that's really important I think to talk about, so we've, you know, we've talked about the responsible uses of it, but unfortunately hydroquinone for a long time has been used, especially in the global south, as a skin lightening, skin whitening or bleaching um, product um, and a lot of that is due to, you know, just the um, pressures um, of uh, kind of, you know, a, a standard of beauty, a certain type of standard of beauty that existed for a long time. I think a lot of people forget, especially if you're younger, that whilst uh, things look a lot more diverse today, that wasn't the case not so long ago. Um, and so really representation when it came to beauty and in the media was generally a very Western um, and quite a white uh, standard of beauty and so in a lot of countries, especially countries who have previously were um, colonialised um, and in communities that perhaps originally come from these places, um, skin whitening um, and lightening is a huge thing and it's a huge problem still to this day um, uh, where you know there is a pressure to, uh, to have uh, a lighter complexion that's celebrated as more beautiful and it's associated with more success. Um, and so um, that is something that unfortunately is still ongoing. Um, so, you know, for me with hydroquinone, I'm always very careful in terms of, um, I think it's a great skincare product for things like hyperpigmentation, but it's really important that the patients that use it, it is to treat hyperpigmentation for a short time rather than 
for skin lightening or skin whitening purposes, which I, I, I think, you know, it's, that's incredibly sad and it's not something that I like to encourage or support or promote because I don't think that people should have to feel not beautiful um, or pressure to have their skin a certain way um, and a certain colour. And so that's, that's the big, I think, problem with hydroquinone is because of its widespread use in that way it's very hard to um, and because there's also risk of you know potential side effects and all of that um, uh, that's the problem with hydroquinone it's very difficult to provide good information about it without also promoting it for all these other uses that I personally think are quite negative and harmful um, and so that's why I made this video and I love to open up a discussion about hydroquinone and if uh, people have you know any questions about it or concerns about it um, and happy to do another video to address those if anything new comes up. Um, so that's that with hydroquinone. I hope you found it useful. Um, the one thing that I will say is there are alternatives to hydroquinone. Um, they are not as effective but they are there. So things like um, arbutin, um, kojic acid, and we have a video about all of these. Um, and, and, and they are other alternatives, especially if you want something that's over the counter, so not prescription, or you're really uncomfortable with the idea of hydroquinone. Um, and they are effective um, in different skin tones. They work a little bit less or more. And so again, I can do a video about these in future, the pros and cons and which are better for what. Um, that's kind of where we are with hydroquinone. Um, I think it's a it's a really good ingredient skincare product when used correctly and when used to target specific problems like hyperpigmentation sort of caused by post-inflammatory or hereditary or when it's used for uh, things like uh, sun damage, so melasma. Um, it also works beautifully with tretinoin and tretinoin and uh, you know can reduce the amount of time you need to be on hydroquinone for um, and it continues to improve on its effects um, and then obviously tretinoin has a lot of other positive um, uh, uses just by itself um, but anyway so that's that for now I hope you uh, find this video useful if you do please don't forget to give it a thumbs up um, and don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this channel if you haven't done so already um, and leave a comment below with what you if you have any questions or thoughts on this or any other skincare matter. Until next time, stay beautiful.